How do you do? Due to the subject matter in today's episode, parental guidance is suggested. Come with us to Scotland, home of bagpipes and kilts, but where the unregenerate human heart is as dark as anywhere else. Her father and mother abandoned the woman in the story when she was a child, and her search for love led her to take desperate chances. But over time, she would learn to rely on the only one that is no gamble, a sure thing. And that's when her heart and mind and life were unshackled. What in the world is Joyce doing here? Our dad just dropped her off. He said some woman brought her in a taxi to his house. Where's your mother, child? She doesn't know. Look, her head is crawling with lice. Are these your clothes, Joyce? Ah, mercy, they're all wet. Well, I cannot take her with me to America, Kitty. I don't have the papers for her, only for Johnny. Her mother's surely coming back to get her. You'll keep her till then? Of course. First thing I'll do is get rid of the lice. This is Unshackled, dramatizing true life stories produced in Chicago by Pacific Garden Mission. What a haven Pacific Garden Mission has been since 1877. Men and women ready to end their lives have come to the mission and received love and a reason to live, as well as food, lodging, and clean clothing. All this thanks to the generosity of friends like you. Now for broadcast around the earth, here is episode number 3809 in the series Unshackled, the program that makes you face yourself and think. The woman in our story would face abandonment, abuse, and assault. Even as an adult, she couldn't shake this trifecta of suffering. This is the classic true story of Joyce Thurner Gallagher, right now on Unshackled. My parents divorced when I was four. I was six years old the day my grandfather left me at my aunt's house. Mother never came back for me. Two days later, Dad took my older brother and left for America. My aunt and uncle were very kind and raised me as one of their own, but they never showed affection, never spoke of love. We attended church together and even memorized many scripture verses, but I didn't understand the gospel. My aunt and uncle had three daughters of their own, and my cousins would often say, We don't want you! Why don't you leave? So, at 13, I discovered something I dared not ask about until I was 17. Well, you're all grown up now, Joyce. Are you excited about graduating? Yes, I am, Kitty. I'm thinking about going to Canada. To Canada? What's ever for, lass? I think it would be fun to go to another country. Montreal sounds romantic. Aye, but it's so far away. Auntie, could I ask you something? Of course. A few years ago, I saw my parents' divorce papers, and my brothers John and Brian Gallagher are mentioned. But my name isn't mentioned at all. Why? It's simple, Joyce. Your mother done it to make the separation easier. Your father had one of your brothers, and she had the other one. So, there was no battle over you because you weren't mentioned. All these years, I felt like I did not belong. Ah, you belong to your mother and father all right. But they haven't done right by you, lass. You were in an orphanage for a time, and then a foster home before they brung you to me. Hmm. Nobody's child. That's what I am. I went to Montreal where I worked as a nanny, taking care of three children. While I was there... My aunt called from Scotland. Are you doing all right, Joyce? I'm very homesick, Aunt Kitty. I miss Uncle James's steak and kidney pie. You're coming back on holiday, aren't you? Maybe. I've been trying to find my father through a mess in Parsons' place. Any luck? No. It's very sad to know he's out there somewhere. Well, he knows how to reach us. That's what hurts, Aunt Kitty. He hasn't tried in all these years. I went back to Scotland, where two of my cousins had had babies out of wedlock, and the third was going through a sex change. I felt confused and isolated. And then one of them in anger said, 
Joyce, are you going to make us say it again? You don't belong here. So I left. I never lived there again. Desperate to belong to someone, I was vulnerable to the first man who said he loved me. His name was Patrick. You were coming on kind of strong to that man in the pub, weren't you, Joyce? What do you mean? You know bloody well what I mean, laughing and talking to him that way. I just said hello, Patrick. I won't have any woman making a fool of me, you understand? I can't believe this. You're getting upset about nothing. It ain't nothing. Oh, oh, pa Patrick, you, you hurt me. Ugh. I'll show you what real hurt is. Oh, 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 oh. That's it. We're finished, Patrick. You can just keep your ring. After that beating, I didn't want to marry him. But he kept saying he loved me and was sorry, and it would never happen again. Three weeks after we married, he beat me up again. He abused me even when I was pregnant, but I stayed with him. When I was expecting our second child, things got even worse. One night, I cried out to God, Please, help me. The next day, my husband was arrested for robbing a post office. A few months later, Hello? Joyce, it's me. Oh, Daddy, I've waited so long to hear from you. Yeah, and Kitty said your mother never came and got you. I didn't know. Yeah. Uh, I'm married now, Dad. And you have a granddaughter. So I heard. I'm glad everything worked out for you, Joyce. I wouldn't say that. My husband's about to go to prison for robbery. Prison? It turns out he was a thief. Not the construction worker I thought he was. I also beat up an old man. He beat me up a lot too, Da. I never should have married him. Well, you've made your bed, lass. Make the best of it. Maybe prison will straighten him out. Life was hard because I had very little money. I took a bus to visit my husband in prison every other day. When our second daughter was about six weeks old, he asked me to visit without the children. All right, you've got 30 minutes. <laughs> oh, Joyce, I told you to leave the children behind. I can't afford a babysitter, Patrick. The church is buying my coal or I wouldn't even have hot water. I have other people I want to come and visit me here. I don't want to use all my passes on you. You don't even want to say your own daughters. I want a divorce. I don't want to be stuck with a wife and kids when I get out of prison. Oh, what, what did I do wrong? I just don't want to be married to you anymore. Guard, I'm ready. So long, Joyce. Don't come back. Patrick! Oh, Guard, bring him back! When I got back home that night, the electricity had been shut off. And I decided to take my own life. It was just too hard to go on. After putting the children to bed, I lined up all the pills I could find. I was getting ready to take them when... I realized there was no one else to take care of my babies. I had to live. Hello? Joyce, it's your dad. How's it going? Ah, terrible, Dad. My husband wants a divorce. His brother told me that he's bisexual, and his own father thinks I should leave the country because of what he might do. You're kidding. He thinks Patrick plans to have someone harm me. Why would he do that? He says Patrick's crazy, and he might be right. Oh, Dad, I had to call the police last week because someone kicked in the front door. Well, why don't you think about coming to America? Maybe I will. There's nothing for me here. I had this ideal dream that when I went to live with my father in Colorado, we'd have a wonderful reunion. I'd get to meet my old brother and everything would be rosy. It wasn't that way at all. I did not realize I looked just like my mum and dad was better toward her. Furthermore, my father and stepmother were big drinkers. Oh, you come here and stir up trouble, Joyce, that's what. I'm sorry, Dad. Why do you have to bring these divorce papers with you? 
It always bothered me. That's why. My name was excluded. Do you know how worthless I always felt because of that? Like I didn't even exist? You're just like your mother. Always stirring up trouble. It isn't my fault the divorce wasn't final. When you married my stepmother... She wouldn't have known if you hadn't broken those divorce papers. Oh, you're a fine one to talk. You knew I was looking for you when I was 17, but you didn't even bother to call. Ah, you're nothing but trouble. Now you have to talk her into marrying me again, thanks to you. After six months of tension, I moved into an apartment with my little girls. But in my search for love, I became promiscuous. I lived with a man for a while, but he was a drunk and abusive too. So we broke up. It was then that I got the bad news. And I talked to a friend about it. She took me to a clinic where they performed a test to confirm my pregnancy. Then they put some water on a little cotton ball until it was mushy and small. And they said, it's just a little blob of tissue like this cotton. We can take care of it for you. So I had an abortion and my friend helped me pay for it. But the cost would be much higher than I knew. Joyce will tell us about that cost in just a moment. But first, I want to share a bit about how our supporting ministry has an impact all over the world. Unshackled is spreading the good news through powerful stories about real people. Our success is a result of God's blessing and the involvement of supporters like you. When you contribute to Unshackled, it has a direct impact. Your support allows us to hire quality writers, talented actors, a skilled production team, and a devoted staff. Through your support, we are able to share Unshackled worldwide. So, in order to continue the work of spreading the gospel and allowing us to offer this program for free, won't you consider making a donation to Unshackled? It's really quite easy. All you need to do is click on the live link, if there is one where you're listening, or visit our podcast website at unshackledpodcast.org, and then click the donate button. Or you can always write a check to Unshackled and mail it to 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. Six months later, on Thanksgiving night, a man broke into my apartment and sexually assaulted me. I blacked out. When I came to, I ran to a neighbor's home and called the police. They caught him right away. But I moved back home to my dad's home during the trial. So, how was your day in court, Joyce? It's horrible, Dad. They make you talk about all kinds of embarrassing things. Your bruises told the whole story. I'll just be glad when it's over. What about that new job you were hoping to get? I, I think it's mine. And what's more, I can get a ride to work till my car gets fixed. Good, good. I, what about housing? The social worker arranged for us to live in low-income housing... So we'll be moving soon. I met Chase Carpool into work for my new job. The first day I met him, he fixed my car by putting in a new battery. He became a good friend who was kind to my daughters. Are you glad the trial's over, Joyce? Oh, yes. I don't have to worry about that horrible man for a few years anyway. And your daughters are too young to remember any of this. Yes. It's a good thing they were asleep when he attacked me. Is this the clinic? Yeah. Will you wait for me? It doesn't take long. Sure. Are you nervous? No. I wish I didn't have to go through this. But I don't have any choice. I can't bear to go through a pregnancy remembering that assault. My life was such a mess that day I had my second abortion. Afterward, a woman handed me some orange juice and said, Are you happy now? That's number two. The deception was stripped away, and I saw the truth. Two babies, not two blobs of tissue. I sat on a park bench outside and cried and cried and cried. Feeling better yet? I wonder if I'll ever feel better, Chase. 
have been through some painful things, but I'm nothing compared to this. My parents didn't want me. My husband abused me, but this? Killing two babies is the worst pain I've ever felt in my life. Let it go, Joyce. <laughs> Let it go. I'm trying. Shall I take you home now? Yeah. <laughs> hey, why don't we go to a movie tonight? <laughs> I had to leave the girls again. Then I'll fix dinner for you and the girls, okay? Chase was my knight in shining armor, and I married him convinced that I had found love at last. I knew he loved me, but I carried too much baggage from the past, and I didn't know how to trust him. I was supporting us while he went to school, and I began to notice changes. I think I'll get together with the guys tonight and study. Oh, Chase, why don't you study here? It's not the same, Joyce. Too many distractions. Oh, that's not what you said when we were dating. You liked being with us. I'm in school now. You're gone so much, Chase. I hardly see you. I won't stay out late. That's what you always say. You know, I have to wonder what's really going on. You just don't trust me at all, do you? It didn't help me to learn you lied about paying the gas bill. And then I find out you're smoking marijuana. Oh, I just can't win with you. Chase! We had been married two years by then. I confided in his mother about our problems, and she told me to pack his bags and put them outside. So I did. I learned he was having an affair the same day I learned I was pregnant, and my world seemed very black. Then my new car stalled while I was driving. At that moment, I happened to notice a big cross on a church nearby. Three days later, my car stalled again in the very same place. And I saw the cross again. So. I checked the service times and went on Sunday. You know, I was invited here today to speak on the church, the body of Christ. And uh, I had my sermon all prepared, but the Lord laid something else on my heart. So, <laughs> I'm going to talk to you about sin and your need to deal with it before a holy God. Folks, you are accountable for the life you live. You need to look at your own heart, your own attitudes and motives, and not look at what others are doing, even if they hurt you. I felt as if his whole message was directed at me. I sat there and cried, knowing my life was an absolute mess. By the time he finished, I was sobbing. When he asked if anyone wanted to come forward to pray, I literally ran to the front and said, Take me! Please! Take me! He sat down with me and went through the scriptures. It's right here, Joyce. Romans chapter 3, verse 23. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. That's, that's everybody. And to that, God says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. How, how do I receive that gift of eternal life? Well, Jesus answers that right here in John 3.3. 3. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Are you with me so far? <laughs> yeah. This is wonderful. <laughs> yeah. So then Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Uh, I went to church growing up. I even memorized Bible verses, but I never knew any of this. Listen carefully, Joyce. This is the way of salvation. Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10 say, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Here, you, you read this next part. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 
Joyce, would you like to pray and receive Jesus as your Savior? Oh, yes. That day in June 1984, I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. My husband wanted to come back, so we tried to restore our marriage. Right after our daughter was born, we moved to Louisiana, where Chase worked on an oil rig for several years. Our son was born there, and we were close as a family again. From there, we moved to Utah, where another son was born, and we bought a home. Then, we moved to Hawaii for a year, and things got really bad. Were you checking up on me again? I don't have to, Chase. These magazines speak for themselves. Their drinking and drugs were bad enough, and the way you ignore the children, the affairs, and now pornography. Don't preach to me about sin, lady. You had two abortions, remember? That's murder. I know, Chase. But I did it in ignorance. God forgives us when we sincerely repent and ask him. I didn't marry a Christian, Joyce, and I don't want a Christian wife. I don't want anything to do with going to church. I don't want anything to do with any of that stuff. What are you saying, Chase? Listen, Joyce, we have one-way tickets home. Why don't you take the kids back to Utah? My ticket is good for three months. Maybe the separation will give us time to sort out a direction for our marriage. Hello? Dad, it's me. How's everything? Uh, we're fine, we're fine. What are you up to? We're back in Utah, but what a mess. The renters didn't pay the mortgage, so the house was in foreclosure. Well, go after them. I can't do that. The Bible tells us to put our faith and trust in God. That's stupid. Do you want to lose your house? The Lord will provide our needs, Dad. Good. Then you won't be crying to me, will you? No, I won't. I'm working in an optical shop, but I'd like to be a nurse. What's Chase up to? He didn't come back yet. Oh? His ticket's good until December. December came, but Chase did not. My children were heartbroken because they loved their father and aided him. My daughters went through some rebellion because of his abandonment, but God helped us through that crisis. However, my marriage with Chase ended in divorce. One night a few years later, a friend called. Joyce, I called to invite you to a meeting we're having about opening a crisis pregnancy center here. What's that? It's a place for young girls who get pregnant. They get information about alternatives to abortion, and they get counseling. That's a good idea. Yes, it is. I hope you'll come. As soon as I hung up, I knew God wanted me to do something. I didn't want to tell the people about that horrible sin in my past, so I pleaded with God. Don't make me do that, please. But how do you say no to the one who gave his life for you? So I went to the meeting, and then helped in the steering committee. About one year later, they announced the need for a director of the Crisis Pregnancy Center. And I knew the job was for me. I waffled for three months before interviewing for the job. But they chose me. Joyce, you're perfect for this job. I know. At first, I, I didn't see how I could ever talk about my past. But I have to tell what God has done for me. Jesus took our shame to the cross. I wish I had known that years ago. I would never have ended my pregnancies. But no one told me. No one ever cancelled me. Look how God is using what you went through to help others. They can relate to you. Yes. I had a suicidal girl the other day, and I know what that's like. I've been there. When I told her my story, she was excited to see how far I've come from where I was then. But you have to know the Lord to have that kind of hope and transformation. Absolutely. Did you ever find your mother, Joyce? Well, I had a letter from her in 1986 when she was in England. Then she moved and I lost contact again. I still haven't met her. What about your dad? He's the same. We're getting together soon. More coffee, Joyce? No thanks, Dad. You like your job, then? I love it, Dad. It's wonderful to help some scared young girl choose life. Then they have to take care of it. There's always adoption. We give them lots of help if they keep the baby. Cribs and diapers, high chairs, and car seats, clothing, you name it. Well, I'm proud of you, Joyce. 
I've seen a big change in your life. All the praise goes to the Lord, Dad. My life was so messed up when I came to him. But he turned it into something good. Maybe... Maybe he could do something with me? He can, Dad. Jesus died so that he could give you a new life. Would you... Would you, would you pray with me, Joyce? You want to ask Jesus into your heart and life? I do. I do indeed. Over time, I moved my family out to Oregon, where I eventually was hired by the state as a case manager for aging people with disabilities. What a joy and blessing it was to help these elderly people, many with end-of-life care. When God was mentioned, I was freely able to talk to them about the Lord. So they're, they're coming next month, huh? They're coming next week, Mr. Sampson. Okay, okay. What are they bringing again? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't remember what they... they uh... It's okay. It's a lot to remember. So, the state of Oregon will be providing you with a brand new ramp for your entryway. And they're bringing you a new wheelchair. Oh, yeah, 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 that's right. That's right. I, I was praying about that for, for a new one. You pray? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, I, I pray sometimes, sometimes. When I'm worried or lonely, I, I, I pray to God. That's good, because God hears our prayers, and he likes when we talk to him. yeah. Yeah, I do that. So, you feel worried or lonely sometimes? Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, so, sometimes. How come? I, 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 I'm... I'm just not sure what happens next. You know, when I, when I leave this place... Do you know Jesus Christ? Oh, 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 yeah. I know who Jesus is. Do you have faith in him? Well, I, uh... I'm, I'm not sure. Well, Mr. Simpson, the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that's Jesus, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God is amazing. I count my blessings every single day as I reflect on his provision. He has been the most amazing Savior and husband. Isaiah 54 5 says, For thy maker is thy husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. Part of my daily prayers are to pray Psalms 23, and I add my name into it. The Lord is Joyce's shepherd. She shall not want God is all we need once we've tasted and seen that God is good. We love him so because he first loved us. What about you, listening friend? Are you ready to hand over your brokenness and sin to the one who died for you? The one who sticks closer than a husband or brother? Wherever you are, you can begin your relationship with Jesus Christ by repenting of your sins and believing on Him as your Lord and Savior. If you need help in making this life-changing decision for Christ, we encourage you to call 1-888-NEED-HIM or you can get in touch with us here at Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. The telephone number in Chicago, 312-492-9410. Our email address is unshackled at pgm.org. Visit our website to learn more about this ministry, unshackled.org. Did you know we've created even more quality Christian content for you, our listener? It's true. You can check out our daily devotionals. In these four-minute episodes, we hear a true story of transformation with supporting scripture and an application point to help us dive deeper in our biblical understanding. 
If you'd like to hear this program in your area, we encourage you to reach out to your station manager and ask them to bring you Unshackled's Daily Devotionals. This is program number 3,809. Heard in the classic true story of Joyce Thurner Gallagher were Lisa Keefe, Brian Plaharchik, Amanda Markeski, Brad Armacost, and Jacob Wilcoxon. Original music, Don Badorf. Sound effects, Jacob Wilcoxon. Recording engineer, David Pierczynski. Audio engineer, Michael Kahn. Script, Kenetha Gabler and Timothy Gregory. Unshackled is produced by Pacific Garden Mission to show through true stories that if your life is empty, it can be filled to overflowing. Please write today or reach out to us on social media. Connecting with you means a great deal to us. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube at Unshackled PGM. And our address? Pacific Garden Mission, 1458 South Canal Street, Chicago, Illinois, 60607. So, until next time, unless our Lord returns before then, I'm Timothy Gregory reminding you that the doors to Pacific Garden Mission are open night and day. Thanks for listening, and may God bless you.